Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all our Guru Maharajas, all glories to you, Maharaj. Um, so, Maharaj, uh, welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. So, Maharaj, today we will continue from Canto 6, chapter number 10, from verses 7 and 8. When, whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you can take the call over. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, my obeisances, all glories to Shiva Prabhupada, all glories to the assembled devotees. Hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Rishir Uvasya Dharma Vastrotakame Naha Yuyamim Pratyu Daritaham e sava priyam atmanam vajatam santya jyam yaham. The great sage Tadachi said, Just to hear from you about religious principle, principles, I refuse to offer my body at your request. Now, although my body is extremely dear to me, I must give it up for your better purposes, since I know that it will lead me today or tomorrow. Yodruvenatmanam nataha nandamanaya sapumam ihata bhutadaya ya tasocha stavarayapi. O demigods. One who has no compassion for humanity and its suffering and does not sacrifice his impermanent body for a higher cause of religious principles or eternal glory is certainly pitied even by the immo immovable beings. <laughs> In this regard, very exalted examples set by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Concerning Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 11, 534. One day Mahaprabhu said, We offer our respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of the Lord unto whom one should always meditate. He left his householder life, leaving aside his eternal consort, whom even the demigods of heaven adore. He went to the forest to deliver the fallen souls who were put into illusion by material energy. <laughs> Except sannyas means to commit civil suicide. But sannyas is compulsory, at least for every brahmana, every first-class human being. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a very young and beautiful wife and a very affectionate mother. Indeed, the affectionate dealings of his family members were so pleasing that even the demigods could not expect such happiness at home. Nevertheless, in the deliverance of all fallen souls of the world, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, left home when he was only 24 years old. <clears throat> He lived a very strict life as a sannyasi, refusing all bodily comforts. Similarly, his disciples and six Goswamis were ministers who held exalted positions in society. They also left everything to join the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srinivasa Acharya says, 
तत्वतूनम शेष मंडल पति श्रेणीम सदा तू चिव भूत्वा दीन गणेश को करुणयम को पीन कांता स्वितो These Goswamis left their very comfortable lives as ministers, zamindars, and learned scholars enjoying Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's moment just to show mercy to the fallen souls of the world. Gina Ganeshana, Gina Dina Ganesh Sako, Karunaya, accepting very humble lives as mendicants wearing no more than loincloths and torn quilts. Kopina Kanta, they lived in Vrindavan, followed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order to excavate Vrindavan's Lord's glory. Similarly, everyone else with the material comfortable condition in this world should join the Hare Krishna movement to elevate the fallen souls. The word Bhuta Dayaya, Maya Mirga, Dayit Yap Sitam, and Dina Ganesh Sako. Varunaya all convey the same sense. These are very significant words for those interested in elevating human society to its proper understanding of life. One should join the Krishna Karsan's movement following examples of such great personalities as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the six Goswamis, and before them the great sage, the Dachi. Instead of wasting one's life for temporary bodily comforts, one should always be prepared to give up one's life for better causes. After all, the body will be destroyed. Therefore, one should sacrifice it for the glory of distributing religious principles throughout the world. Sri Chaitanya Manal Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Panchakalpa Taru Vishya Kripa Sindhupa Evacha Patitanam Padapavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Mau Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shemak Tibhaktivananta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nivrasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Sitarine Daisi Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Oda Vakavindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hari, hari. Powerful stage that the, the Dachi has been requested by the demigods to give up his body so they can make a weapon out of his bones, and that weapon will be able to destroy this demon, Vichasura. And so when the demigods approached the Supreme Lord with the but the difficulty of how to deal with this demon, the Lord gave him this advice. Go to Dadachi, he is very liberal, and ask him for his body. The Dadachi, after hearing the requests of the demigods, didn't immediately give up his body. He wanted to hear from them a little bit about why and also is explained for what purpose besides. And then Dadachi says that, you know, one's body is very dear to oneself. You're asking for something that a beggar will come to a rich man for begging to a person for begging, but a beggar will not know the position of the person he is begging from. And the person who is giving will not know the position of the person who is asking. So let me hear some of the reasons why 
I should give you my body. <laughs> so he puts the demigods into a, a situation where they have to explain, and they do. Finally, he agrees. And because he says, ultimately, one's body will have to leave one either today or tomorrow. Explained in this verse. So who, who owns the body? Do we own our body? Or is the body owned by the person who, who takes care of it? Such as our boss who gives us so much money so we can have food and uh, shelter and whatever we need. Is he the owner of our body? Or is it our parents who gave us our body? Or is it actually owned by the Supreme Personality of Godhead who formulates all bodies? Who actually owns the body? This question came up in other discussions. And it's ultimately understood the body is owned by the same one who owns everything belongs to the Lord. We might say my body, but it becomes my body because I've been given this body and me is the person who dwells within the body. Just like our home is dear to us or our apartment or whatever residence we may have because it gives us shelter, it gives us protection. It satisfies all our needs and desires. So the house is very dear to us, but we are not the house. And that's soon that sometimes we change houses. We also change bodies. The house sometimes is destroyed. Like sometimes all of a sudden the body will it can collapse and die or undergo some turmoil. So yeah, the body is not us. The place of our residence. Therefore, as a house is dear, our body is also dear to us. So the demigods are asking for something that is very difficult to do. But the dashi is in full knowledge. He's a sage. And he knows that if I can donate my body for a good cause that will help others, then this, this is the actual principle of human life says human life means paropaka. The word that Sanskrit word paropaka means to do, do, to do good to others. Well, the purpose of human life is to do good to others and not simply live for one's own personal uh, desires and sense gratification. That is animal life. Human life means to reach out and find ways to do good to others. And of course, uh, we do, sometimes we do that with family members and friends. But then again, when we speak in a complete sense, and who is our family member, who is our friend? Ultimately, we, be, 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 we belong to the human race. So actually, all human beings are our family. Actually, we are spirit souls, so all spirit souls are included within our, our family. So one who has a broader sense of understanding, or you might say the complete understanding, sees all living entities as being a part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, they see all living entities as being one's brothers, sisters, and related on the spiritual platform, which is beyond the bodily platform. The bodily platform is temporary and relationships change. Therefore, values change, situations change. But on the spiritual platform, we are always related to each and every one of us are related to each other in the sense that we all have ultimately the same interests as our best interests. And what is that? We come back to our father, the spiritual, uh, the king of the spiritual principles, that is Krishna himself. He is the supreme king. He is the supreme father, the supreme commander. 
and we are all subject, subject, his subjects, his sons and daughters like that. So we related on the spiritual platform. But the Dachi knows that. Therefore, if he can do good to other living entities, he thinks this is a great opportunity. And so he, and Prabhupada explains how one can sacrifice for the benefit of others. And uh, sacrificing for the benefit of the others is what makes, makes life um, valuable. Because otherwise, it's not human life, it's simply animal life. <laughs> and so Prabhupada talks about the importance of reaching out and how this Krishna consciousness movement is. Our movement, sometimes people would criticize why you, why don't you just stay in your temples and read your books and do your worship and go on with your daily affairs? Why are you always out into the streets? Why are you always distributing literature? Why are you going here and there trying to encourage others to become part of you? You know, why don't you just leave people alone? <laughs> well, it's like a person who sees another person and they're walking towards a precipice, a, precipice, a big hole. And so, that person is not aware that they're going to fall into this ditch or maybe fall off the side of a mountain. So a person will say, oh, wait, stop. You're going, you're going to fall. Well, and he'll do something, or she'll do something to save that person from a calamity. Now that is human life. <laughs> to always think how one can do good to others. And of course, there are different ways to do good to others. People who are a little elevated materially, they want to do good to others by opening schools, hospitals, food distribution centers, clothing distribution centers, and come up with many programs for welfare work for the general population. Many people live like that, and they find satisfaction in that because they want to help others. And when you help others, even if it's in a material way, there is a sense of satisfaction that comes with them. And, but a devotee understands people are not suffering because of lack of food, clothing, or medical care or education. They're suffering because of want of their, the real goal of life, which is Prema Pumartha Mahan. That's why Bhagavatam says, Tato Brahma Jigyasa, in the human form of life, one should inquire into the nature of the absolute truth. That is the beginning of real life in this world. To inquire, who am I? Why am I in this world? Why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to die? What is the purpose of life? And there's thousands, tens and thousands, maybe even more books written about what is the purpose of life. But God tells us the purpose of life, and that is, he says, come back to me in the spiritual world in devotion. So our ISKCON movement, our Krishna consciousness movement, is geared to educate people in the process of devotional service, where they can ultimately come to the platform of worshiping the Supreme Lord in loving devotion, become perfect in that activity, and eventually leave this world never to take birth again and go back home, back to Godhead. So in the Christian tradition, there is a statement that says, um, I think it's called the first commandment. One should love God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And then it says, it goes on and saying, one should love one's neighbor as oneself. So that's the first and most glorious commandment. So what does that mean to love the neighbor as yourself? That means whatever is good for you, 
whatever you have found valuable in, in life, whatever you see that is helping, helping you in your life to become happy, to become educated, to become free from various suffering, share it with others. Help others. So we understand that that means to give Krishna consciousness to others. And as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati would say, uh, there's no shortage of anything in this world except one, and that is a lack of Krishna consciousness or God consciousness. So therefore, one who has been blessed with this good fortune, someone someone else has become very compassionate. And because of that, I am now in devotional service. So my life has become uh, successful. In, in due course of time, I will reach the supreme goal. So somebody has made some sacrifice to bring me to where I am. So how do I repay that? So Prabhupada writes in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fourth canto, one cannot repay the spiritual master for what the gift of Krishna consciousness. Every Anyone who tries to repay or thinks they can repay the spiritual master is compared to a joker who presents himself in the audience to make people laugh. In other words, it's not possible to repay the gift of eternal life with Krishna in the spiritual world. But one should try. That, that's the further understanding. And how can that try? By making others Krishna conscious. So by doing that, one becomes recognized by the Supreme Lord. And that will make that person who makes that sacrifice, that effort to reach others, they become very much favored by the Lord and at the end of life they will have an easy ticket back to the spiritual world so because the Lord himself in fact in all his different incarnations he comes he comes why to uplift the conditioned souls he doesn't have to do that but he does it and it is Concern and love because he knows when he comes, the maximum amount of, of benefit will happen. And so he personally comes. And you'll see, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. Well, what did he do? He uh, he had a, says his wife was Vishnu Priya. She was like the goddess of fortune. His mother was Sachi Mata. So loving, so caring, so uh, always thinking of how to make her son happy in so many ways. He had a, and you know, he was respectable within the society. He had prestige, he had honor, he was somewhat well to do economically, a nice, beautiful wife loving mother, many, many associates. But he gave it all up. And he explained in his purport just to show compassion for the fallen souls. And he took the principles of sannyas and he accepted that those principles in a very ex perfect way. He was, you know, when Jagannanda Pandit wanted to give him a nice bed. He sent it through through Damodar Goswami, the Lord's personal secretary and assistant. When when uh Damodar presented the bed to Lord Chaitanya, he said this is a gift from Jagannanda Pandit. Lord Chaitanya became a little bit unhappy and he said now he wants me to accept sense gratification and so the lord in order to accept his offering had the bed taken apart and left with only a little straw mat and so he used that straw mat 
to lay down on. So the Lord accepted even hardships as the Supreme Lord in his role as Sri, as a devotee of the Lord, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who followed the principles very strictly for austerity and for um, the restrictions that come by way of interaction with the opposite sex. He was very, very strict in that also. So here he is, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, performing so many austerities. Why? So he could take the sannyas order and preach to the conditioned souls and give them a, a, a prime opportunity to come to Krishna consciousness. Uh, every incarnation practically comes to uplift the conditioned souls. Ram Chandra came and he, uh, he destroyed Rava and his kingdom, reestablished uh, the kingdom of Ayodhya and uh, made so many persons God conscious. It says in other discussions in this verse that's quoted here in the, in the very beginning of the purport, that verse uh, uh, from the Srimad Bhagavatam it explains that it relates to Lord Chaitanya, but Srila Prabhupada also says, this verse also applies to Lord Ramachandra, who left his wife in the palace. Yeah. That also applies to Lord Ramachandra, who actually did the same thing. He left his nice, comfortable palace and put on deer skin, went into the woods and lived like a mendicant for 14 years, accepting austerity and giving up all of his royal connections and everything. Why? In order to uh, fulfill the desire of his father and at the same time uh, establish religious principles that a king or a saintly person should be very obedient no matter who they are to their superiors. And so, of course, he had many, many principles that he wanted to establish. So the Lord accepts these roles as a conditioned soul just for the sake of uplifting the conditioned soul. And he had to go through hardships, losing his wife, so many things. It wasn't easy. We say, well, he's the Supreme Lord. Yes, but the, uh, the understanding is there was no need for him to go through all of this, but he did it in order to, you know, uplift the condition souls, reestablish religious principles, remove irreligion from the world, and teach the highest principle of what it means to be a leader. They say that when you, uh, Mahabharat teaches you how to live, Ramayan teaches you how to lead, and Srimad Bhagavatam teaches you how to love. Each of these scriptures do all three, but they each have a focus also. So in Ramchandra's pastimes, he's teaching what it means to be an ideal leader, which is very rare these days. It's actually really not rare, it's not even non it's non-existent. That's why people would say sometimes we want Raj Ram, uh, uh, Ram Raj, 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 yeah, Ram Raj. We want the kingdom of Ram, but and then you have to become like Ram in order to do that. <laughs> so yeah, so here back to the main point, which is the Dachi. He, he's seeing. Yes, I have a body and it can be used for some religious principles to destroy demoniac influence in the world. I'm requesting by the Lord, by the demigods to give it up. And so he does it. <laughs> so advanced Prabhupada's message for us is that we don't have to do that, but we should sacrifice our time 
energy, words, intelligence, abilities to preach and spread Krishna consciousness. That is not just for people who have bra or brahmacharis or sannyasis. That is for everyone. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Lord Nityananda to take to get married so he could preach to the Grihasta communities. And he did. Lord Nityananda had no desire to get married, but on the request of Lord Chaitanya, in order to preach to the people in that ashram, he did it. So the Lord makes the sacrifices on behalf of the conditioned soul. So that, so our movement is geared in that way. It's not an ordinary religious movement where we lip chapatis every day and we have our, you know, our, we have our chapatis, rice, dal, sabji, and whatever else we eat. Every day we chant a few rounds, read a few books, and feel good about ourselves, speak something nice to some of our friends, go to the temple once a week and um, give a donation, and then we think, oh, I'm Krishna conscious. You're not, really. <laughs> the real, the business of this movement is Paropaka, as Prabhupada said. It is meant uh, it is meant on vairagya vidya, knowledge and renunciation, renouncing material comforts for spiritual activities in order to spread the movement far and wide, which is the most important thing at the time because as we see the world is going to hell. <laughs> but there are a a very large class of people out there who are searching, who are looking, who are praying for something better in life. This is so we have to be ready to give them this message. And there are different ways you can do that. That's a whole other subject, how to reach out to others. There are different ways. But the principle is that everyone should be an instrument for the mercy of the Lord in the lives of others. And that is the business of human life. Uh, those who live simply for their own personal interests, actually they do not live life. They actually will never feel fully satisfied or happy. And we can only do that because life is meant for service, service to God, service to the parts and the individual parts and parcels. <laughs> Okay. Hare Krishna. Many thanks, Maharaj, for such an inspirational class. Thank you so much for letting us know how we can be more self-aware and how we can be selfless and how we can be more parapkari. Maharaj, one quick question that arises in my mind is that so when we do selfless services for say non-devotees, I've been hearing lectures, they say that you have to be careful where you go and provide your support, be, be it monetary support, be it anything. Would you shed a few words on that? That is, it's like strictly all our save, all our money should go only to devotees or we can also do, we can extend our hand also to let's say 100% neophyte or eight, like that. Well, about monetary contributions specifically? Also, for example, yes, Maharaj. Example or or general or uh, or specific. Most mostly, let's say monetary assistance. You have some money and you want to give a donation, then that you, you have to investigate and see where you can your money will have the best um, the best possible effect. <laughs> so if you give for distributing books, or if you give for opening temples, if you give for uh, supporting those who are surrendered in Krishna consciousness and um, can uh, use that in order to preach Krishna consciousness. These are some of the things, but each person has to investigate where they want to give. 
Yeah, but you should give because for a householder to give in charity is one of the regulative principles. It's one of the main regulative principles. Mm. Mm. Prabhupada, I was just reading today. Mm. I think it's, where was I reading it? Yeah, it was in the Bhagavatam too, that 50% of one's income should be used for religious principles. 25% should be used for uh, personal needs and 25% should be used for savings. So that's, that's the actual recommended division. But who's doing that? And Prabhupada writes that at least 15 times in different parts of the scriptures. It's in his books many times. We can find it in a lot of places. Well, that was based on Srila Rupa Goswami, who, when he retired from government service, he had two boatloads full of gold coins. And he gave half to spread Krishna consciousness. And he, as, as we mentioned, 25 and 25. And when Sanatana Goswami was in jail, um, he didn't have any money to get out. He didn't need it. He contacted Rupa Goswami who sent some money to help him get out of jail. <laughs> so that's, that's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, that's the whole story. So, yeah. But how many of us are following who are Grihasas? How many of us are actually following that? That standard. So it's not a forced thing. Not like you, you know, if you don't do it, you're just a, a demon or something like that. <laughs> what it means is that you should, you should try according to your position in society, your economic status, should give regularly to religious principles. Hmm. This money is Lakshmi. Yes. And Lakshmi needs to be with Narayan. If you use Lakshmi in the service of Narayan, you'll always be happy. You'll always have enough for yourself. You'll never think, of, oh, I'm giving away, I have less. No. If you use your time in Krishna consciousness, Krishna gives you more. You use your intelligence, he gives you more. If you use your finances, you get more. Krishna says, oh, this person knows how to use different things in my service, so let me give more of the same. He does that. We should never think, oh, if I give, how will I live? No, don't worry. Krishna will take care of you. <laughs> And most of us live beyond our, our standard needs anyway. Very, very nicely mentioned, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, just investigate where you think the money should go. If you don't, if you can't think of any, then you can ask people where you where would you recommend I offer some donation. Maharaj Temple, it goes, but there are also certain organizations like Save the Children in very um, poverty stricken places. So, I many mean, they the, might not be Krishna conscious. Many of the outside agencies are quite dubious. How much of the money actually goes to what they say they're collecting for? Most of them are all hired help, so they have a whole clientele of pay, paid people. So a good part of the money that comes in goes to paying the people who are working. Sometimes there's also, also been stories based on investigations where none of the money went to the, the, to the, uh, request, to the uh, goal of the places that they mentioned. Sometimes a small portion goes, sometimes it's a little bit bigger. So... Uh, but welfare work in the material world, I mean, it's nice. But if you feed a person, then uh, four or five hours later, they're hungry again. But if you give them Krishna conscious, 
things, or you do something to help them become Krishna conscious, then they can solve their own problem. They have the equipment. So there's charity, and it's mentioned in the 17th chapter, charity in the mode of goodness, charity of the mode of passion, charity of the mode of ignorance. So if someone is needy and they ask you for some, some donation, you can do that. Well, sometimes like when we drive along the streets, people come to the car windows in India, even in the, in the West, asking for some donation. We give them some food if we have it. Sometimes we give them some coins, some, some donation or something. But if you refuse to give in charity, you become hard-hearted. And if you become hard-hearted, then you can't practice Krishna consciousness. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for your wonderful answer. I, I saw Megha Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji and Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All of our sister Prabhupada and Shigaranga. and Shigaranga. Um, Mataji, I did raise my hand, but I had to lower it because uh, Maharaj already answered when he was speaking about um, you know what to do when you see these um, these people in the streets um, asking for money or, or some kind of food or something. So um, yeah, that's that's all. And I know, like I guess, the principle behind everything is you know charity is if someone asks, you must give something. So um, that yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Carry Prashadam with you and then you're yeah. in a good position to offer something spiritual. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. There's a question in the chat. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam Maharaj. I got a question. Is it somebody? Is it somebody is hearing and understanding about ISKCON disciple and Bhakti Shastri course from recorded online? Will that person be initiated? As that person cannot attend courses because that person does not possess money, will that person, can that person be initiated? So I can be initiated or can I say I'm wanting to get initiated? I don't know how to say it. Yeah, these courses are, are given freely. Yeah, the disciples course, which is a two or three day course, and the uh, and the Bhakti Shastra course, which is required for second initiation, are given freely. You just have to find the different venues that are offering these these courses. It's free. It's not a paid program. Thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, don't hesitate to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Shila Prabhupada. All goes to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class, Maharaj. I like the point when you said uh, Lord Chaitanya has uh, uh, left uh, all his comfortable life and uh, took sannyas. Just uh, the um, people in the world should get benefit. Same with uh, Lord Ramchandra left home and went to um, exile for 14 years to get benefit for to kill the all Rakshasas and all the rishis, they will, you know, be protected from all the demons and also the devatas should get protected. Yeah, the Lord is the supreme uh, principle of compassion. He's always distributing mercy either directly when he comes or indirectly through his different devotees.
And then we can take example from that and to say, well, if the Lord doesn't have to do it, but he's doing it anyway, he's showing us that this is what he wants from us. Mm -hmm. He's also teaching that principle. So Maharaj, this the Dishti Muni, is he like the incarnation or some something like or he just a devotee? He's a sage, the Dachi. Sage. Yeah, he's a sage. You don't hear much about him in other places in the Bhagavatam, except for this particular section. Yeah. But this is so big, you know, it, it, it's like, you know. Somebody's asking your body, give me your body for the benefit of others. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he has performed austerity. He's noted for his austerity. And because of his austerity, he became very physically strong, very powerful physically. And so because he was... Lord Vishnu told the demigods, if you want a weapon to kill, you're, you're going to have to go ask the Dachi for his body. And from his bones, you can make the thunderbolt weapon. And that was the we that is Indra's weapon. That's what it is. It's that powerful thunderbolt weapon that Indra carries that was made from the Dachi. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful association. Thank you for having these programs on for the last 10 years. <laughs> More than 10 years, maybe, I think. 14 years. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long time, so... It's all devotees, mercy. They all join every day. So that's why this program is going. And <clears throat> your wonderful service, Maharaj. Yeah. For coming and giving your association. We have a one quick question from Raj Prabhu. Uh, no. Ria Mataji says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, how to realize the importance of bhakti and become sincere in Krishna's service? Easy, just associate with devotees. Sadhu Sangha, association with devotees will bring that understanding to the forefront. Thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, feel free to unmute your cameras and get all the blessings from His Holiness and Thanks. ask all the questions. We have one from Bali. Bali Mataji. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dhanvat Pranam. Uh, very wonderful class. And I like the point you said where we we are also learning the story of the Deji and uh, what we can do is, which we no need to do that much of uh, sacrifice, but we can just uh, give our time. We are learning how to sacrifice the body here, but uh, our part is only to give our time and service to the Lord. That is very wonderful for today, what we can take from this uh, lesson. And uh, Maharaj, I also have uh, some story heard before that uh, we learn about uh, Karna, right? When the Karna was... Uh, um, more to a different place. Radha Devi was his mother. His mother's name was also Radha Devi. And he, uh, she raised a Karna in a such a way that he, he will become so, um, he is also starting uh, uh, Dana, like a donation for everyone in his very childhood. And she started uh, teaching some stories. And one of the stories is this Dadichi, Sage Dadichi story. So that inspired Karna also to, give away everything whatever someone asks so is is that uh, in the real uh, story maharaj or it is only where did you read that oh okay uh, in my childhood when i'm listening to the stories and songs mainly 
in the song it will the, the uh, like taladannu mahadatavay means you have you have to overcome those uh, uh, donations also all the um, people who did the sacrifices and who offered uh, like bali chakravarti is also there right who donates everything so she tells the story of this uh, um bali bali and cb uh, who gives uh, his um, own uh, like muscle or his uh, part of the body bali cb dadichi data uh, no more than that data so you have to overcome their donations that's what she teaches when he was in uh, his childhood days like uh, raising him yes cb dadachi and there's another one what what's his name that gave everything away and he was a king he was fasting mhm i can't remember the name of the king was it ranthi ranthi dev bali cb dev hmm ranthi ranthi dev ranthi dev mhm yeah so i heard that karna was grown up listening to all these stories so he became that kind of uh, data when he was giving his kavacha kundalam away when indra came in a, comes in a disguise form also to protect his own son arjuna yeah these stories you're hearing are coming from the local village stories which are mm-hmm. we don't have that information in in uh, the scriptures that are available for us but they're my stories we call it sala purana Sala Purana means village Purana. Yeah. Places that people go up in the village with. Village and also many songs uh, were sung uh, in um, the bhakti, uh, the, the, you know, the devotee songs where, whereby you sing in music lessons also. It comes uh, how Karna was raised in his childhood. Mm-hmm. So it gives inspiration for everyone listening to these stories, mainly for the kids if they learn in an early age. Yeah. It helps a lot. you don't teach values and people mm-hmm. values grow up properly mm-hmm. hari krishna maharaj just i wanted to share what i listened in my childhood things that's nice thank you yeah hari krishna i remember, remember that mhm <laughs> kabhava mata ji if you would like to go ahead with your questions please uh-huh. hari krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisance is all glory to shri prabhupada Guru Maharaj, uh, I've got one question regarding this donation. So what about, what are you advised for body donation after, like, you know, it's going on organ donation thing and stuff like that. Can we do that or we shouldn't be doing that? I, I didn't hear the question clearly. So, you know, the organ donation, um, organ. medical, in the me- medical field, they ask for now, every everybody has been, requested that after like after you die why don't you donate your organs and if put your name on the organ donor list is it worth doing that or not no. <laughs> they just take it and they sell it and get money for it that's what they do there's a big there's a big racket a big criminal racket of getting organs and reselling them for big prices it's done by <laughs> Mahara, just to piggyback on Mataji's question, so when we go for like, say, driver's license, right, they will ask, do you want to donate your heart, your eyes, yeah. here in the, in the U.S.? So no, we want to donate your intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Thank you very much. So, and they say, well, what does that mean? Well, here, here, it's right here. It's in the, I got the, my intelligence from this book. It's called Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> so you can, get, you can get my intelligence in the same way. <laughs> uh, yeah, we discussed, we discussed this many times, and it doesn't seem to be something that devotees get involved with. Mm-hmm. We want to help people by giving them knowledge, by giving them uh, a direction in life or where, where they can take charge of their own life. And that's Krishna consciousness. So our, our charity is knowledge. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you, Guru Mahaj. We can also give food. We do that. Too. Mm. We also have programs for distributing food to people who are in need. We have food for life programs. During the, the uh, recent um, earthquake in Turkey, uh, two countries, I think it was Czechoslovakia and uh, Hungary, sent a whole bunch of devotees to that area with, with large amounts of food supplies. They're still there now, even today. So we do that. We do food distribution. And we also give Krishna consciousness through, through our books and through our, our words. We did the same thing in Ukraine when we had devotees from London went to Ukraine. So that kind of charitable work fits in with, with the People are not only getting food, but they're getting prashadam. Thank you, Maharaj. Any last minute questions, devotees? Is there some is there anything else in the chat there? No. 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 I let me just check. Uh, okay. Oh, there is thank you. Indulekha Mataji saying, thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a nectarian class. Please accept my most respectful obeisances. I really loved how you stressed that the whole purpose of being in Krishna conscious is not just to chant some rounds or go to temple, read Srila Prabhupada's book, etc. But the real purpose is Parupkar, such an important message. So she thanks you. And also Sujata Mataji saying, Bhakti, Brinda, uh, Padashre Mata, hope you were able to get in touch with Adi Gadadhar Prabhu. He shared contact earlier. Please let us know how we can help. Hare Krishna. Vrinda Gopika Mataji is writing, Hare Krishna, Ananda Koti, Dandavat Pranam, His Holiness, Chandramoli Swami Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. On behalf of all the Vaishnavas, Srila Prabhupad, Srila Gurudev, Sri Radha Gopinath Ji Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. So those were the few little comments. And uh, thank you, devotees. Thank you, thank you, thank you for always sharing and thanking and thank you for expressing your gratitude. We have Lalitangi Mataji, if you would like to pose your question. Hare Krishna Mara, please accept my humble obeisances. Goes to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mara, for a wonderful class. And also you said about how devotee meant for uh, Paropakar sharing. <clears throat> uh, I have uh, the question about humility and tolerance. Um, what is the connection between that and which leads to uh, what, like we are reading so much about them and we know how important it is. But uh, when I see myself, how much I'm practicing that, it's very disappointing. So, I want to make progress on that to please. So, Bhakti Siddhanta, when Bhakti Siddhanta was about to send his preachers to different countries throughout Europe, London and uh, Germany, and at that time Burma, which is now Myanmar, and other countries, France, they also. He told them, You will not be effective to reach these West. Unless you practice Trinadapi Samichena, Tayori Vasahishna, that you have to wear that that verse on your neck as your ornament. Otherwise, you will never be able to be any, you will not be successful in preaching Krishna consciousness in the way. Yeah. But very much connected with preaching. Mm -hmm. Thank so you're, you. you're asking its relationship with preaching or you're asking how to develop these qualities more and more? Yes, Maharaj, that was also my question. Yeah. Well, your husband is very humble. <laughs> you are... <laughs> You are like taking money everywhere, like how 
uh, I mean, only looking for the good things, even if there is a uh, mounds of faults. No, he's he's great. He's very humble. I I was amazed how how humble he was. Such a such a very prestigious person, but he's carries himself very humbly. And he is humble. He spent time with me, just being with me, just to assist me, even though I didn't even ask it. I didn't. I needed it, but yeah, I didn't ask it. So your humility that you are accepting whatever we are doing for our own benefit, correct? But if you, they say, if you want to accelerate your humility, you practice that quality and. Part of that practice means to associate with people who have the quality, who are like that, and help you become like that. And that's probably the easiest and most quickest way to develop these qualities and associate with people who have the quality. But then if you're trying to develop something, you have to be consciously aware of the need to use it, to apply it in your life and not just go on in a mindless way and just going on what you do with your everything. You should practice that. Practice humility. Practice tolerance. Practice developing our the quality of our chanting. All of that. Practice. Thank you, Maharaj. I mean, uh, your association is such a, don't have words, just thoughtless blessing from you and from the Lord for us. We hope to visit you this year sometime. We're not sure when, but. Yes, Maharaj. When are you coming to Charlotte? The word when cannot be answered now, but <laughs> the word coming is. Yeah, we're coming, but we don't know when. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you on the 22nd at Naperville. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, we'll, Hare be Maharaj. we'll be here for the weekend, 21st and 22nd. Thank you, Maharaj. See you then. Hare Krishna. That's only a month away. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maharaj. See you soon. I pray that I can get there. <laughs> Nowadays, travel is not so easy. When we speak to you, Maharaj, we feel we are we talking with Srila Prabhupada. When we speak to you, we get the feeling we are speaking to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> you are representing Srila Prabhupada. When I, when I hear you speaking, I hear Prabhupada speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a servant, I'm a dog. Well, you know, it says you should become a dog of your spiritual master, and then you are in the best position. <laughs> Thank you very much. And what is Great that? Blessing. Kumara Kukura. What is that song? Tumito Thakur, Tumar Kukur, Sarbosha Tumar, Charone Shopiya. Yeah, let me become your dog. <laughs> that way I, I have a good master. If I'm a yes. street, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> Yeah, we pray like that. Nice, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Seek your blessings. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.